Okay, my name is Kathy Malala. I am the general manager for Kirimbi Kenya. The story of the children, um, there are plenty of stories that, that come to mind, but one particular one, a couple of the ones that come to mind is the story of one of the girls that I met here when I first came from, um, came to Amagoro, her name was Judith. And uh, Judith used to come to class late. And um, at first I was very upset with her because I knew she could do better, but she was mostly absent from class and uh, the teachers were giving up on her. And then, you know, she'd come late some, and then she goes out for lunch and then she doesn't come back. And I thought, you know, I needed to give her heart to heart and talk to her. And um, so I, the day she didn't come for uh, her class was the day she was supposed to lead the class. In, uh, because she had a better command of the language, English and all of that, she had great promise. So I really felt bad that she didn't come as promised. And then she, so I went to visit her home and um, she was the main, uh, the main worker for the home. Girls are treated differently from boys. So she has a brother in the same class. He gets to come to class at 6 a.m., start out at 6 a.m. But Judy starts out at 6 a.m. doing chores. And she's not allowed to come to school until she's done with shows. She's the first born. She's a girl. It's a double whammy. And then she comes to school. Then she goes back at lunchtime and has to do the afternoon chores. So what's the need of coming back to school? And um, we had to talk to the family and we had to intervene in a big way, get the chief to intervene and everybody to intervene so that her parents would let her come to school. And mostly was because they didn't realize she could do well. And even if she did well, what would a girl do in school? And Judith passed. Uh, I didn't know whether she would or she wouldn't, but she passed. She didn't pass better than her brother, but she passed just the same. And, um, and she, was, she went to the, to the school near us, uh, St. Thomas Amagoro Girls, because that's where she could afford, we could afford to take her. Uh, there had to be a fundraiser, a church fundraiser to help her go, but she passed. And the odds against her were so great that uh, her passing was miraculous. And it, it dawned on me that there are many Judiths just like her. There are many of them. There are many girls whose story we don't know. All they need is an intervention, somebody who believes in them, somebody who will um, a community that will support them and meet them halfway and they will go the rest of the way. She did not need me to go the, all the way for her. She just needed a little support. And that's what I've realized is they just need that little support. And especially the girls are very dear to my heart. They just need you to represent them and give them a voice so that they can have a way of, um, of uh, making a living later in life. So Judith was my first miracle that I saw. Yes, uh, that's another thing. The belief that girls are just basically dumb or can't, um, and that there's no, there's no use to waste your resources, was very uh, ingrained. And it's mostly, it's a, it's a self-perpetuating prophecy because you don't give the girls pro the resources. So they don't do well, they miss classes. And then eventually, even before they finish grade eight, they get married just to get away from the drudgery and enter into an, a whole different situation. So there, is, there seemed to be a self-perpetuating prophecy. But in the case of Judith, the fact that she was able to pass, um, first her dad, he was a laborer and um, he didn't mind her going to school, but he just didn't think that it was for, of any good. But she, because of the church intervening, going through the, the cultural change, the church and going through the elders, um, he was basically shamed into letting her go. When she passed and she was able to go to high school, um, the fact that she just passed was a shock to them. So when her sister was in the same class, her sister came, came later to the same class, we didn't have to go through that whole shebang again of asking, telling them that she's going to pass. Not only did Judith pass, but she continued doing very well in school and, um, and, and doing well at home. And, um, 
And, and so the sister that came after her didn't have the same issues. And even today, when after, after Judith, Judith did not pass well enough to go to university, but she passed well enough to go to a teaching college. And she's in a teaching college and, um, and she's holding her own. And just the idea that Judith is standing up, she's doing her thing, her sisters that follow her didn't have the same issues. And not only Judith, the first class, Kirimbi class of uh, 2013, half the girls didn't make it. And as, as the years are coming by, the more, the more you help the girls go to school, just make it to school, the better they do. And the better they do, the more the community believes in them, the less the obstacles to them. And then when they see them going to, to, um, to other girls' beliefs, so it's a, it's a circle of positivity that feeds into each other. So that's what I have seen. Right, that's, that's exactly right. And Kiwimbi, what we are is a catalyst to success. Uh, we are intervening where nobody else could intervene. We are in just in the right place, doing the right thing to help propel them to a better future because if we didn't do that, then they wouldn't be able to get there, but they're getting there on their own. They just need us to intervene for them. They need us to help them give them that push. And then it all snowballs from there. And that's what Kiwimbi has done. And over the last years that Kiwimbi has been in Amagoro, our, how we are regarded and our, what has happened to Kiwimbi is because um, the community has begun to believe in us. Our work is self-evident. There is so much support in the community for Kiwimbi because they can see how it's affecting the children. And they can also see that the children uh, that go to Kiwimbi and um, go to the library and how they benefit, how their lives change. So because of that, we are viewed very positively here and we are given a lot of moral support by, um, by the community. It's, a, it's a, an underserved community, but they are not lacking in spirit. Please join me in supporting Kiwimbi and supporting the children of Amagoro in helping them get to the next level in life all they really need is a push. All they really need is an opportunity so that the trajectory of their lives can change. Join Kibimbi, join us, partner with us, and let's help our children.